All right, man. Welcome back to the Malapur Smart Podcast. We're talking wrestling today. We got Vlad here, the wrestling expert. Hello, Vlad. And he's happy to not be talking AEW right now. We're yeah. talking yes. WCW from the glory days. So it should be more the fun than days. what we just talked about. Welcome, Vlad. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's always good to be here. You know that. Robert is also here. My good friend, uh, the Frozen Nation. That's also... Me. Did watch wrestling during this time period, but more WWF. So a lot of this is brand new to him. I don't know if you even saw any of this show before I, Robert Wirt at Halloween not. Havoc. <laughs> Nothing? Oh, my God. None of okay, it. then. To summarize real quick, we're not really going to summarize, but there is a playlist, a link to the playlist below. We're on part 14 of our series. We've been chronicling WCW after the start of the NWO and since Hulk Hogan joined them. First time he turned into a bad guy. It's pretty interesting stuff. Go back and start from the beginning if you want to. We're also in the midst of a feud with Hollywood Hogan and the Macho Man going into Halloween Havoc. So we've covered all of this in detail. So that's the past few episodes that we've done. And it's a pretty high stakes feud. It's a marquee feud. And it's been good, I think. Six weeks of nitros leading up to this Halloween Havoc. And we're finally here. The NWO had defeated WCW at War Games in the previous pay-per-view, and they reign supreme, man. They are kicking ass. They have the World Heavyweight title. Referee Nick Patrick, also I have to mention, every time we talk about the NWO, <laughs> it's a gem. It's we have a gem. to talk about Nick Patrick, and he has been heavily suspected. Everyone's trying to get him to admit it, but he's like, nope, I'm not with the NWO. I have a whole Nick Patrick playlist, actually, so if you guys want to go back and I don't think anyone's some... ever said that before. That's, those words have never been spoken. Man, Nick, Pat Nick Patrick, Patrick is the star of this show, to be honest. Without him, I don't think this would be half as good, but we have to mention him because he's obviously a player in this game, Robert, so go back and watch that. If you haven't seen any of that, that's like the best wrestling I could freaking recommend to anybody. So the Nick Patrick playlist is in the description below of this video. But let's get started today. We're going into Halloween Havoc, pulling up the TV for you YouTube subscribers. Uh, if you want to zoom in, go ahead. Just, just remind you guys that you could do that before you complain that the video is too small in the corner. Just, just go in there with your finger on the phone and just go like that. Makes it bigger. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, just freaking make it bigger. Make the part you want bigger. You want to look at Vlad's face? You could make his face bigger if you want to do that. Well, who but, doesn't? Yeah, but the footage is what we're here for. So this is the intro to Halloween Havoc. It's October 27th, 1996, a few days before Halloween, but... Close enough. It's a Sunday. And this is the intro video of the pay-per-view. If you bought the pay-per-view, this was the first thing you would say. One singular mistake I ever made. We shall rule the wrestling world. Was bringing Hulk Hogan into WCW. Ooh, yeah! That is a big Hogan and the rest of you thugs. All they did is just in his sight. They are straight in a little bit. That's all you are. You thugs. Well, there you go. Short and sweet. They didn't really tell you the whole details of everything, but they assume you would have been watching if you actually paid money to buy this pay-per-view. The MGM Grand, man, look at that arena, man. Yeah, look at that. Cause see, I remember going there when I was a kid. Oh, my God. The, the Lion. This was my favorite MGM design. I don't know why they ever changed it from this, but it looks super cool, man. It was, like, gloriously magical going there as, like, a little 10-year-old or something. Yeah. I've been to that hotel when when i was little when our family went there that was the hotel we stayed at <laughs> but this, yeah, it's, is, it's a, it's a, this was a good hotel the show is here halloween havoc at the mgm grand arena where they held a lot of legendary boxing events and such yeah a capacity crowd is here to see something more important than that the macho man in hollywood hogan let's see what we got today the commentary team 
Bobby Heenan and Tony Schiavone are there on Nitro, but the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Cody's father. Dream. Right. Is, he would do a lot of the pay-per-views. He would do the pay-per-views, right? So he's here today as a special attraction. All right. So on our little playlist here, we've been chronicling NWO stuff mostly. If there's some interesting things that come up, we've talked about them, but mostly we're trying to focus on NWO. So. We're only going to talk about the matches that have to do with NWO. I'll mention the other ones just to say what happened. The first one was Dean Malenko versus Rey Mysterio for the Cruiserweight wow. title. Good match. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure this was a great match. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this was actually had a storyline. Dean Malenko stole Rey's mask on a Saturday night episode. I couldn't find footage of it. I was trying to, but I don't have that episode, and it's not up on Peacock, so... If anyone has that or has a link to it, I'd like to see it. But So Dean Malenko got some heat going into this match, and he ended up winning this match, winning the Cruiserweight title. But I'm not going to show oh, wow. any of it. But yeah, he won with a powerbomb off the top rope. So good match. Oh, if you guys want to see this, go to Peacock. This show is there. I would, Mike yeah, Tanay. I would, I would expect that to be a good match. <laughs> yeah, just not, not anything that we're covering in our storyline. So. Right, right. Uh, Jeff Jarrett is on the card today. He's facing the Giant. NWO is the Giant. And it was supposed to be Ric Flair, but they kind of beat him up, and he's supposedly out injured, although he's up and about. But And Ric Flair is also the U.S. champion, but when they beat him up, they stole his belt. So the Giant is in possession of his oh, U.S. title. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Okay. Yes. Diamond Dallas Page versus Eddie Guerrero. Hmm. Also Not a match that match. doesn't really have to do with NWO. But, yeah, they've had a few, too. DDP had a couple of post-match attacks on Eddie at yeah. Clash of Champions, the last one, and put him out injured. And then DDP feuded with Chavo. So... This is an interesting match. Doesn't have to do with NWO though, but I will show you something from this because Nick Patrick is involved. And we'll show oh, you yeah. how his how his neck is doing after that attack from the Macho Man. So it's very uh, important, his health. I'm gonna skip a little bit forward into it. And let's still see. working injured? Wow. Still working injured, yeah. So he's working this match today. And let's see what how he can get down and do the counts. A two count. Give, give that man a raise. <laughs> well, DDP's telling him, like, the speed he should be counting at. It's like he's telling him he's, he's counting too slow. So. <laughs> he pushed him back. DDP deserves to be pushed back. He didn't disqualify him, but he pushed him back. Look at this. is authority right here. This is a leader. Cannot do it. I'm telling you, exactly. you know, a can't a referee. Wow. Yeah. For you audio <laughs> listeners, yeah. Nick Patrick pushed DDP into the corner and he's just yes, putting he his finger in his face and telling him who's boss. He's like, it was a two. Oh, so he shook his hand. Yeah, well, he yeah, better all right. Around, he's getting ready to all right. There you go. Right Even DDP could respect that. He was like, okay. So this match was won by uh, DDP, actually. Mm. DDP won the match. But I'm going to skip over yeah, that. That makes, that makes sense, though. Yeah, with the diamond cutter. This is Mike Tanay in the back with the main event guy, Macho Man. So he's going to cut a little promo. I know, and all these people know that I got a very important match coming up against Hollywood Hulk Hogan. But snap into it because in a little while, I'm going to take Hollywood Hulk Hogan and break him in half. Snap into him too. Dig it! And we are back in the locker room. All right, well, that was probably like pre-taped because it was pretty short. I'm going to skip over Dean Malenko's interview after beating Ray. Let's see what comes up after this. Oh, NWO. Jeff Jarrett. Ted DiBiase is like their spokesperson really for the night. First clue. And he's going to be bragging, and he's going to be keeping track because there's four matches tonight that have NWO figures in it. And he wants four victories. So the first one is going to be the Giant against Jeff Jarrett. All right? So the Giant comes in through the crowd with NWO music. Jeff Jarrett, here he is, my guy. This is actually a very interesting matchup. I would like to break down this match, but oh, well, here's Nick Patrick holding up the United States title like it's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's not even on the line. No. He, he's respecting the fact that the giant is 
the NWO United, United States champion. And it's on the line, according to him. So, But I'm going to skip a lot of this match, all right? Although it is kind of interesting to me. Well, here comes Ric Flair. He's going to be there at ringside, I guess, to watch Double J's back. But I'm going to skip 10 minutes to the ending just to see the booking. Here's a figure four leg lock on the outside. And the Giant is just going to get out of it. Obviously, Jeff Jarrett is outmatched by the Giant here. So he kind of just reaches out of that figure four and he's about to choke slam him on the outside. But Ric Flair is going to come from behind and hit him low, low. And Nick Patrick calls for the bell. That's a disqualification. That's an NWO victory. And that's the Giant retaining the United States Championship. I don't know where the belt is. I don't know if they're going to be able to get a hold of this belt. I didn't really notice that. Well, the horsemen coming out, united and everything. No NWO help for the Giant here. Kind of interesting, although they're all there. But he did win the match. All right, so that's 1-0. 1-0 and for the NWO tonight. I don't think they have the belt. I don't see it. I'm kind of looking to see if they have the belt, but I don't think they reacquired the United States Championship belt. So that might continue on as we continue on with Nitro for the weeks to come. I don't know. We'll see. But I want to move on. I know you guys got to get out of here. I want to get to the main event because that's the most important thing. But we're going back to Ted DiBiase, who was up top, and he's going to introduce the next match, which consists of an NWO member. This time it's six against Chris Jericho. All right. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. I would have watched, I would have watched all these matches. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. The card. All right. So let's. Uh, I think Nick Patrick is the referee here, also. So. <laughs> what? Is there no other referee? <laughs> this purple guy. He's <laughs> refereeing all the matches. Here's, here's a shot of. Here's a shot of Nick Patrick struggling, but he's fighting through the pain to officiate this match. This is about six minutes into this match. I'm going to skip another four minutes. Pick up. Down he goes. Let's watch Nick Patrick here and see, the, see exactly what he does. Oh! Lion salt. Moon salt. Middle springboard. Try to get him over. He's watch got him. Watch he count. bridged him. Bridge into a pinfall. One count. <laughs> 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 it took him a long time to get down there. He's crippled. Give him a break. <laughs> Somebody should give him a break, all right? Break his neck. Yes! Well, you know, it's already broken. Three, four, One, five, two. Yes, yeah, six. They count into five. And I was like, that should have been a five count. <laughs> Maybe he's doing the best he can. A spin kick. One, two, three. He was right there. <laughs> So, for that one, he got down. For the sixth one, he, he got down there. It, was a, it wasn't a fast count. It was just a fair count. Yeah, exactly. That was very fair. I'm sure your monitor is going to go fuzzy. Much prop to Nick Patrick. So, that's, that's 2 and 0 oh for the NWO. The ultimate pro. 2 and 0. Oh. This should put six in line for a cruiserweight title shot, too, also. Yeah, and he knows it right here. Let's see Chris Jericho staring down Nick Patrick. Yeah, stay right on this, guys. Well, he's going to run away. Just, Nick Patrick just made the list. Oh, my Please. God. <laughs> the future list. He just got screwed. <laughs> he's helping him to the back. He's helping six to the back. Why is he helping him like he's hurt? He's not even hurt. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving along. All right, Lex Luger is involved in an intra-WCW feud with Arn Anderson, stemming from war games. Arn Anderson said that Luger was the one who gave up, so he blamed him, although he didn't really give up, which is the funny part. But here's Arn Anderson's intro. Bad blood flowing going on right here. I can't see that much. It all goes back, if you'll recall, in our last pay-per-view on the 15th of September. When we were in Horseman. This is a later match in Arn Anderson's career. It's kind of interesting. I'll show you some some tidbits from this, although it doesn't have NWO involvement, really. Here comes Luger. I'm going to skip 11 minutes into this match. It's a good match. We just are not none of these None of these matchups are bad. It's actually a really good card. Oh, this hell is a good yeah. Card. This is a strong card. Uh, this is where the ref bump happens. So I think... Ducky! Uh-oh! Put the brakes on and Arn shoves him 
Curtis. No, no poor Nick Patrick. <laughs> Mark no, that Curtis. Nick Patrick. No, that's Mark, Mark Curtis. Curtis. Oh. Yeah. All right, so, oh, yeah. so that was Nick Patrick. Oh, so now that the referees are down, Arn Anderson's going to go for the steel chair. Oh, no. Misses him. Luger ducks out of the way, and Anderson hits the post instead. Luger's going to nail Arn Anderson with that chair, because this is this is a feud at this point. And with no referee, why not? Oh, didn't the Four Horsemen leave Lex Luger laying, Vlad, to end one Nitro? Like, NWO wasn't there, but the Four Horsemen. Arn Anderson did. Arn Anderson did. Yeah, no, the whole Horsemen did. I'm the night like that Sting walked out on WCW. Uh, Luger was in the main right. event. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. Arn Anderson is the, the same night, the same night Sting walked out and gave his speech. Uh, right, right, the horseman right. left him right. laying. So, yeah, Lex Luger has some serious, like, you know, heat with these guys, man. They beat him down NWO style. This is the ending right here. This is the torture rack that's going to end Arn Anderson. And. The rack is after the fact. He's got him right. Arn Anderson's storyline to end his career, Vlad, was that he had a back problem or a spine problem or something. Like something like that, like like a nerve issue somewhere. Like a nerve yeah. Problem. So I don't know. I don't know if this has anything to do with that angle, because it seems like he's gonna sell his back after this. There's the dungeon of doom. Cheering on the demise of the four horsemen in the audience. And Lex Luger. Lex Luger won't let go of the rack, so Arn Anderson's going to be in a lot of pain after this. I think this is going to lead to the end of his career, basically. That he's older, he's having back issues, so they're going to use this. Here comes the horseman to... This is kind of long, he lays there for a while, I'm skipping over it, but this is going to be a few minutes of him selling his back pain and everything. So the end of Arn Anderson's career has a lot to do with the NWO storyline. So that's kind of why I'm yeah. at least at for least sure. showing for this. Sure it does. So for sure it does. good match, good match, but I'm glossing over it just to say what happened. Let's move on. Harlem Heat against the Outsiders. It's another NWO matchup. This is the Harlem Heat's promo, but I'm skipping over it. Oh, this is probably one match that isn't that good, Robert. It's the Faces of Fear against Chris Benoit with Woman and Steve McMichael. I don't know the Faces of Fear. <laughs> Ming and the Barbarian? You don't know them? Uh, Ming and the Barbarian. They're two of the toughest wrestlers, like, in reality, according oh, to all no. wrestlers. <laughs> and they, they would beat anybody's ass in a in real, real shoot fight. In real yeah, in real, yeah in or in a bar fight. fight. Yeah. This is Dungeon of Doom, Four Horsemen stuff. I'm going to skip over this. Although uh, the Dungeon of Doom do leave the Four Horsemen laying, and Woman is there consoling her future husband. She should have just let them beat his ass, honestly. Because of the double murder that happened. Basically. Well, yeah, exactly. See, if she only knew, but she didn't know at this point. They were. Nobody. I don't think anybody. Nobody knew that was going to happen. Yeah, I know. It's just weird footage looking back on it. But let's all be respectful here, okay? Let's not talk too much about it, I guess. If my math is right. Back to NWO stuff. Ted DiBiase's in the crowd, and he's gonna introduce the Outsiders against. Harlem Heat. The world tag team champion. I could dig this. Next With sensational Sherry and. Yeah, this was a great team. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and these guys have been heels too, man. The way they beat Public Enemy, I kind of had this feeling Public Enemy would try to come in and <clears throat> fuck this matchup for the Harlem Heat, but nope, they weren't involved at all. But they did win the titles from them through some nefarious means, That's if true. you will. That's true. Another heel versus heel matchup, kind of like the Four Horsemen NWO one. Sensational Sherry's there. They're all there to kind of help. So let's see what happens at the end of this one. Uh, this is kind of cool at the beginning when they show the Outsiders the tag titles. They just flex with them, show what they would look like. It's kind of disrespectful, wouldn't you say, Vlad? Are you not supposed to do that? Definitely disrespectful, of course. But they're all about disrespect. It's not they're, their titles, right? They shouldn't be holding it like it's theirs. They're a gang. They don't care. <laughs> they're a bunch of thugs. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> they're a bunch of thugs. Eric Bischoff said. Oh, yeah, this, they're, they're, this is the uh, 
the Scott Hall opening. Let me rewind that a little bit. He always used to do this when he would take out the toothpick that was in his mouth because he was just eating and then throw it into someone's face. And then the little spooky finger thing that he did. Yeah, like, oh, you're mad, huh? What are you going to do about it? Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> dude, when I was a kid, I was always weirded out when he threw the toothpick into people's faces because I was like, dude, what if it goes, like, into somebody's eye or something? Like, I, I always thought that could be a little dangerous in actuality. But I don't think he threw it like at their he threw it like at their chest or he tried to aim like not at their face. But I think yeah. I don't know. It was hard to tell. Looking, the crowd is looking at something else. What the, what yeah, I, saw, at? I saw that too, but I don't I don't think it has anything to do with the show. Oh. Probably somebody got get, got kicked out or something. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what you have to do to get kicked out of a WCW event. Probably real. acting really nutty, loopy, like you know, really probably drunk and shit. Who knows? All right, well I'm gonna skip nine minutes into this match all right there's a spot that here that you got to see it's uh, is this the spot where is this the spit spot is that the spot the spit spot what is that oh that's not the spot okay my hall well here comes there's sensation a... here comes sherry oh, yeah. martell to interfere Sherry's up on the uh oh uh oh oh, oh man All right. Well, I gotta rewind that because I gotta describe some of it for the audio people. I'm sorry. So I think Sherry got up on the ring apron. Scott Hall gets the sweat off his stomach with his fingers and throws it in Sherry's face, and she slaps the fuck out of him. Turns him around, as they call it. Slap. And then Scott Hall grabs her and lays a big smooch on her. He kissed her! He, he slapped it! Spit with Sherry! Fucking right Dusty Rose. He slapped it. Dusty Rose. He slapped it. He slapped it. He slapped it. And that leads into a Harlem sidekick from Booker T. And Sherry is on the sidelines. She's reeling. She's reeling from that kiss. I'm going to skip another two minutes to the booking of the match, the ending, so you can see how this was booked. Although the crowd did go nuts for that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So here's the ending. It looks like Harlem Heat are going to try to get in on the cheating one more time. Colonel Parker, right? Is that his name? Black. Yeah, Colonel Parker. Nash on the outside. Hall is left in. And Harlem Heat going for it off. Going up top. This could be it, Tony. Going for the Harlem hangover. Got it. Yeah. That was a nice move. Count it. Yeah. Well, the referee is, is not counting because Stevie Ray is in the ring. And then Kevin Nash gets in the ring as Colonel Parker's going to hit him with his cane. Takes the cane from him. He just gives it to him. And Kevin Nash cracks Booker T twice on the head. And that's going to be the end, I think. The referee's going to turn around and Scott Hall's going to... Well, that was Stevie Ray in the ring. I'm sorry. Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray. Yeah, I have it backwards. After getting cracked in the head twice with the cane from Kevin Nash, they're kind of just laying there for a second, and Scott Hall kind of reaches over and counts the three counts. And Booker T's like, what the hell happened? Why was he unconscious like that? So we got new tag team champions. 3-0 and today for NWO. This is the first time Paul and Nash were WCW Tag Team Champions, Robert. Historical. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, when I mentioned the spit spot, there's the spot where Scott, I, if I think it's this match, it's Scott Hall spits. I, uh, either, yeah, I think Stevie Ray. He spits at Stevie Ray, and it's, a, it's an interesting little situation that unfolds after that but I, I thought that's the fight you were going to show but it doesn't matter it's not a big deal was that in this match yeah in this match it's somewhere in this match but you don't have to huh. look for it it's all right i it's missed not it the end of the world oh. damn it's okay don't worry about it we're gonna get to the main event now though the, what we've all been waiting yeah. for the right. main event well this is a commercial for world war world three is coming three. up Next, no, yeah. the next pay per view. Oh, World War video, is there. video cassette. I haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, this is that's all we had. <laughs> oh my god, we had a library of fucking video cassettes. Yeah, <laughs> they look like Beauty and the Beast. 
<laughs> yeah, it was the Battle Royal uh, pay-per-view kind of Oh yeah, World War Three was like the Royal Rumble in a way. But it was, but it was like three rings wide and like how many guys? Like, like I forgot how many guys. Like sixty guys or something. Probably crazy, sixty right? guys, I think, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. All right, well, Hulk Hogan was working on the Three Ninjas, I guess, which I have never seen that movie, but they put a, a wig on him to give him hair, and I think he came to this match with the hair. I can't hear you! He's got feathers! Look at that. That's almost like a haircut. That was a good line. No, it's not Hogan, Hogan, Hogan. It's Hollywood! Hollywood, brothers! Maybe those are just nerve ends. Yo! NWOites, I just got done with my brand new Three Ninja movie. On November 8th, my brand new movie, Santa with Muscles, opens up, brother. And I got tired of body slamming Hollywood this week. So I decided to come back one more time and body slam a long lost lovesick puppy named the Macho Man. Ooh, yeah! There's only one thing left to say. NWO rules. It is time for Hollywood! What the fuck? That was a horrible yeah, promo. Yeah, yeah that was, that, the way that ended. That. That. that was bad. Okay, so he's making his way to the ring through the crowd. Here's the macho man. The macho man's going to come with the... A monster truck. And oh, back then, nice. back then we were hey, simple cool. people, man. We just wanted a monster truck. That's all we wanted, man. That was fucking. Is Michael, awesome. Bu is, is Michael Buffer an, uh, the ring announcer? For yes, this? Michael Buffer is the ring announcer for the main event. I forgot to mention Robert. Not that we're gonna sit through the whole ring walk entrance or anything, but. Randy Anderson ought to tell. The giant and Ted DiBiase are there with him. Exactly. And. The Macho Man is finally going to get his hands on Hollywood Hogan one on one for the title. So let's get to the start of the match. And Hogan's still wearing that wig. For any of you audio listeners out there, he's got a freaking fake wig covering his bald head. So it looks very unusual. Oh, here's a. I'm talking to you, Hulk Hogan. Here's the Macho Man. Get two goons, stooges, and bag carriers out of here so I can kick your ass. Well, he's fine as long as he can hide behind the Giants. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Randy Anderson, is, he's out. Okay, so Randy Anderson is the referee for this match. That's a very important point to make. It's it's not Nick Patrick. Okay. And Randy Anderson has has instructed the Giant and Ted DiBiase to to lead. Hogan's got to do this on his own. Do this on his own. So here we go. Wait, wait, wait. So without without Nick Patrick, this won't be called down the line. This isn't fair. I know. Yeah. yeah well, we just got to deal with that, I guess. You, you, yeah. This is not fair to Hogan. <laughs> So a lot of these Hogan matches from this generation where he's a heel, Vlad, I got to say I'm not very fond of just because a lot of them are similar. Like the one he had with the Giant at Road Wild it was. It was uh, a lot of this stuff, a lot of leaving the ring, you know, milking that 10 count, not really wanting to be in there. Obviously he's the heel, so he, he's supposed to be afraid. Happens again, goes in there, and I think he's going to run out again. I don't know if you think this stuff is humorous, Vlad, when they run away like little heels, you know, like little scared heels. No, but I don't think it's humorous. I think it's, it's supposed to build, do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get heat. Yeah. It's just a big chunk of time. It's like six minutes here that I'm kind of glossing over. Here's another one. They're finally going to, like, kind of start to do something, and then Hogan's going to instead just be like, oh, no, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, it can be overdone sometimes, sure. I, I agree. Uh. Sure, it can. I'm not saying it can't, but overall, I don't hate. I don't hate it. Because really, what are you gonna? You're not gonna get like a Shawn Michaels Bret Hart match here with Hogan. Savage could probably still do it at this point. I think even at this point of his career, but uh, Hogan was never known for being like this. 
I managed it. Amazing work. Like, he was a, he's a smart worker, in a sense, but not like ring general type of guy. All right, well, let me skip a little bit forward. I think they're finally, this is probably where the match actually starts. So. Well, when Hogan does start fighting, he's he's very skilled, you know? He's one of the greatest of all time. He's was the WWF champion throughout the 80s. It's kind of funny that he's very scared now, but he's really one of the stronger characters. Okay, let's uh, skip forward a little bit into this match. I think Hogan took control to start it. And we look for the Macho Man to make a run at this thing here. Got to make a macho run. Man. What do you make of him run. wrestling with that wig and that and the sunglasses? Still got his shades yeah. on too. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> it's like, he, he looks outrageous. He looks outrageous. <laughs> All right, so here's the Macho Man finally getting some offense in. I like his punches. He should at least knock, you should at least knock the glasses off his head for Christ's sake. In the ring, Macho Man deflects an onward. The glasses are off. There we go, finally. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. I tell you, things you do come back to haunt you. I can see clearly now. Here's Hogan begging him off, please, no. Hulk Hogan and Gene Simmons on the Macho Man right there. I apologize. Let's just shake hands. Let's let's yeah. Let's call it even. Yeah. It's all been a mistake. It's all been a mistake. Oh, he's got the hair. He's got him by the hair. Step up to the plate. Down goes Hogan. Oh no. Oh. I tell you what, he just scalped. <laughs> he scalped Hulk Hogan. He put his he put his wig on himself oh, so and the glasses. That's, okay, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> There's the where's my hair? Oh. <laughs> he was he was so happy to finally have hair. <laughs> well, that didn't last long. <laughs> no. Well, pull the rest of it out. What the heck? Just get out of there, bro. Oh, he's leaving right on his tail, too. Get that Ben Franklin look alike back into the ring and mow him. And I hope it tastes pretty darn good. Oh, he shoved, his, he shoved his wig into his mouth. Oh. As a mouthful of toupee. That needed to be done a long time ago when this thing turned on us. Remember, yeah, we this, told you Hulk, this needed to be done a long time ago. The throat. Well, this is the first chance he's gotten to have him to himself. You know what I mean? I don't know where he is. All right, I'm gonna skip a little bit because I think the Macho Man is gonna grab a steel chair. Actually, wait, like, there it is. You see? Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. What, I don't know what to say about it. I think it's referee's discretion, as they say in AEW, that they just can't ruin the main event of the pay-per-view like this. You know. Randy Anderson did take the chair away from him. Hulk Hogan took it, so there's a chair shot from Hogan. Okay. I don't know. Randy Anderson's trying to keep some control. I'm sure he doesn't want to make the, the main event here at DQ. He doesn't want the main event to end. That's fair. But that has That's happened fair. before where the main event ends in a DQ, you know, so. Sure, sure. But this is a big pay-per-view, and this has been six weeks of build-up. they got to let this go a little bit. All right. I'm going to skip to the Miss Elizabeth scene. Oh, Because here comes Miss Elizabeth. I didn't skip that much. I only skipped, like, 30 seconds. So she's here for, I guess, the Macho Man, supposedly, right, to support him. She's not wearing NWO gear, not wearing black. She's colorful, so. Yeah, that's true. There's Miss Elizabeth. She's like, she's well, like frozen. She doesn't yeah. know what to do. The players have all come to the game now. Do I deal with my heart or do I deal with my pocketbook? Do I stay in the movies or do I go for the man I love? Or do you love him or do you want a career? I don't know anymore. The Macho Man got the deal brain with the pain, blues, and agony. That chair laid on his back. Needs to come up out of this. All right, so Hogan's in the ring choking out the Macho Man. Miss Elizabeth is on the outside of the ring. Hulk Hogan is there yelling at her. 
Roll up, holding the tights. Macho Man held the tights, but no, didn't get him. Almost two count for the Macho Man. That was close. It was gonna get right there. I don't know. It might get closer. Yeah, what, I mean. This Hulk Hogan trips, trip up by the Macho Man. Macho Man grabs a handful of tights. Oh jeez. Whoa. Full moon right there. Didn't expect a full moon. <laughs> they used to be Shawn Michaels' thing. Shawn Michaels' ass yeah. would come out for every single match. <laughs> oh, that's true. Right hand in the hip. All right, so Hulk Hogan's got a little bit of control here, but I think once the next time Macho Man is going to get him, he's going to clothesline him over the top rope, and Hogan's going to use Miss Elizabeth to hide behind her. And I think from here, I'm just going to let the match play out. If you guys don't mind, we'll just watch it from here. Yeah, absolutely. He was outside. Macho Man got the chair. Look at this. Oh, man, give me a break. Hulk Hogan, you coward. Hulk Hogan using Miss Elizabeth, holding her in front of him. Running away now, just straight up, back in the ring. Now, when you come in here. There you go. Hulk Hogan with the experience. Oh, but no. Scoop slam for the Macho Man. Finish him off, Randy. Finish him off. Savage. Knee to the back. Hogan outside again. Get him in. Get him in. Savage. Grabs Hogan. Grabbing the feet of Savage. A stalemate here. But now, uh-oh. Hogan pulls him out. He wrecked him right right by the head, but Hogan had his feet. And pulled him right out. Oh. Oh. Well, Hogan's not gonna Honestly, I don't remember how this whole thing ends. Though. Even though I found it, I, I have no idea. You are on your own. Well, again, Miss Elizabeth again with, for the second uh, time. The ultimate, ultimate heel. Hiding behind a woman, throws her into the Macho Man and clotheslines him. Oh my God. Use her as a tool horrible, horrible. To turn this tide of battle. And I'm not so sure. Uh, you can tell that. Visually, she's distraught, but I'm not so sure whose side she's on. I don't know what she's doing. She, she shouldn't be out here. No, you're right. Knowing the nine and the, there you go. the safe savage is in, she should not be out here. There you go. I agree. She's Bobby Heaton is right. Yeah. What the hell is she even doing out there? Or she's overly Support. concerned. I don't know. Macho Supporting the Macho. She ain't giving it. Macho man ain't she ain't even bad. supporting them. Yeah. He's only costing them. Well, like this. Oh, wait. Here she comes. Going to the Macho Man right here. Elizabeth is, is, I don't know if she's telling the Macho Man something. Come on. Oh, you see, that was going to be a leg drop. She threw herself in front of him. She threw her body in front of him. What a woman. I guess they're still in love. Hogan's grabbing Miss Elizabeth by the chin, putting her in the corner of the ring, giving her a stern talking to. That guy's got nothing to do with what's going on here. On here. Here comes the leg drop. There's a big leg drop. Oh, man. That's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. As he badmouthed a woman between the big foot and the leg drop in his career, and that cost him. It's got to hurt Hogan, man. Hogan's ass. Oh, yeah. That looks painful. Well, Savage has a little more than we thought he had. He's still alive. He's still got Oh, no, Miss Elizabeth. He was going to use a weapon. I don't know what he pulled out of his tights. object of some kind from Ted DiBiase. Took it away from it. Oh, yeah, DiBiase slipped it to him. Oh, there goes oh. Randy Anderson. Yeah, right now, anything could happen here, guys. Hulk Hogan clotheslined Randy Anderson. It was a mistake. He was trying to clothesline Macho Man. So, we need a ref, guys. Holy Moses, Nick Patrick's coming. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, here you go. There you go. Now, now it's going to be fair. <laughs> One referee's out of commission. There has to be a referee out there. Mark the, Curtis yeah. has come out, too. Yeah, the other referee is out there. Now, let's get Mark Curtis in the ring. Yeah, put him in the ring. Yeah, and do it quick. But there's no referee in the ring right now. Oh. Hogan ducks. Savage. Got him up. Scooped him. Scoop slam. Savage is Here's Hulk Hogan. Big elbow. Mark big Curtis elbow. is helping. Perfect position for the big Nick elbow. Patrick's climbing in the ring, for God's sake. Big elbow. Elbow drop. Okay. Nick Patrick is in the ring. Count never. One. 
What the hell is going on here? We've been stabbed in the back, gentlemen. WCW has been ripped off. Take it easy. Lay him out again, man. Just lay him out. He did. Oh, my God. Don't worry about it. He laid out. The Macho Man laid out. Nick Patrick. Go for Hogan. Oh, he's taking off his neck brace. Hogan's got oh Randy God. Savage, the title. He's still got that object. Just Hogan. <laughs> he's ripping out. <laughs> he's got it. He's dead. Watch out, Macho. Oh, no. Oh, man. He blocked it. Hogan had Nick something. Has what was he going to use? Uh-oh. Came up. Don't stop now. Nail him. Nail him. Oh, oh, in shit. the head. He did. He, he got him. He cheated. He cheated. Got him flushed with the four and object. It's not fair. He cheated. It's not going to matter. Patrick's not going to count this one. Where's the other ref? Look at Curtis out here. Somebody count. Oh, there's Ted DiBiase. DiBiase's got the Macho Man. As the Macho Man went up to the top rope. You're right. DiBiase's got the Macho Man where he don't want him. Well, this ain't the ref. There is hella interference yeah, going on now. It's here comes the Giants. It's all broken. It's all He's broken loose you. at this point. The Macho Man right up. Gonna choke slam him right out here. Right on the floor. No, he didn't choke slam Man, the Giant is attacking the Macho Man. They just had a feud for like a month themselves for Fall Brawl. And here comes a choke slam to the outside. Oh, man. Where is WCW? Where are the four horsemen, bud? I, you could ask that question all the time. Man. I don't know. And Hollywood have. Hulk Hogan is laying prone in the middle of the ring, out colder than a wig. We have been ripped off. And, and the giant has anyway, rolled the Macho ago. Man into the ring, and oh, he's literally on. gonna grab no. Hulk Hogan and no. <laughs> no. <laughs> roll him over the Macho Man. And, look at DBS. and here comes Nick Patrick. Two. You gotta be kidding There you go. <laughs> you oh my God. That's the match. <laughs> But that was a great match, though. I forgot that to mention. Great. I got him just mentioned for anybody who's listening, for anybody out there in India or something listening on the audio podcast platforms. Because when Nick Patrick was making the count, I didn't describe what happened. He went one, two, and then he grabbed his neck like it was a pain. Like, ah, oh, my neck. I can't do it. I can't do the third count. He's working injured. Dude, we got to rewind that part. We got to watch that part again, dude. That was one of the fucking funniest moments in wrestling history, man. I think this is the part where Robert didn't know what was going to happen. Climbing in the ring, for God's sake. He's got him. Get out and count never. One, two, <laughs> That's like as blatant as it could get. Dusty Rhodes is like, what the hell? What the hell? Let me skip back to the end where we were. Sorry. So Hollywood Hogan is still the champion. Whew. That was quite a ride, huh? Sure. The last of that match was really entertaining. That was fun, huh, Robert? What'd you think of that? that you want to really give some good. comments? I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Wait, it was like wait, a what's WrestleMania the, main what's event. The giant, what's the giant bringing you? A, a bucket of ice? What? Yeah, a bucket of ice. Cause to wake him up. Yeah, because oh. Hogan's like dead. He got beat with the elbow drop and everything. So they got to wake him up somehow. The, and he got hit with whatever that foreign weapon was. I don't know. Yeah, like that's it. true. That was totally not fair. The giant <laughs> is going to wake up Hogan. <laughs> That's actually good. Hulk Hogan's not so sure what happened. There you go. All right, Robert. Was that a WrestleMania main event worthy type of matchup? That basically yeah. was a WrestleMania main event, man. Hogan that, versus the Macho Man. That was a previous WrestleMania main event. Yeah. Was it? They did? Oh, <laughs> they WrestleMania did, 5, did, huh? Yeah, I forgot which one, but they did a WrestleMania. I don't remember. Yeah. This was probably Hogan better than was... WrestleMania. This has got to have been, like, their best matchup. I, I can't say that's bad, but it, uh, I would have to go back and see. But yeah, this was, uh, I liked it. It was, it was fun. It was fun. I think that was fucking hilarious. And the NWO still reigns supreme. All right. Well, do you guys know what happens after this? I think Vlad knows. Uh, of course I do. Hulk Hogan is going down. <clears throat> and all I got to say, NWOites, you definitely caught the right train because we're heading out of town. What you gonna do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Hollywood Hulk Hogan retains the world heavyweight title. 
thanks to hey. what is that uh, what's no. this all about what's this music what is this there's no other match I schedule mean, yeah. what, bagpipes? It sounds like what i'm gonna tell you what it sounds like boys there's a big old chill bump running up and down my spine right now. I'm starting to get the bumps. I think I know what you're talking about. Sounds like bagpipes to me. Oh, no. Oh, I just said that. <laughs> wow! Roddy you Piper? look at this? Yes! You know who that is! My goodness! It's Rowdy! Oh, Rowdy! It is. Piper! No doubt about it! Out of nowhere! Look at Hulk Hogan's face! That's one man, Hogan, does not want to see. That's Talk about cartoonish. Oh, my God. Well, Vlad, would you say Roddy Piper was Hulk Hogan's greatest rival in the WWF? Yes. Or of his career? Yes, I would say yes. I think so. I, I would so, say yes. so this I is a nice he, moment. I mean, Roddy Piper is one of the great best players of all time. Don't! Even think about it. So yes, this is the next moment to, to, to yeah, confirm that. Yeah, Roddy Piper, who was <laughs> the leader of the heel faction in the wrestling cartoon, Rock and Wrestling, Holy right? Lord, I... He was Hogan's yeah. main rival in the WWF, I would say. Even though he never really had a title. Did he have a title match against him? I don't know. I think he did, but... Yeah. But they never had a I clean... Think clean ending i don't think hogan ever Why beat him clean just head back with no he never beat him and take a break whoa 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 so you know vlad this is uh seven minutes promo to end the show seven minutes left i don't know to end the pay-per-view yeah what do you think you guys interested in hearing this seven minutes with piper and hogan at this point i don't mind i mean it's almost over all right then think about it I remember that you and I were running neck and neck. Why don't you shut up for a second? It's my turn. Be careful. I am not here to represent the WCW, the NWA, the SPCA, the SOB, although I can be one SOB when I want to be. Be careful. Be real careful. Yeah, I made a lot of money being real careful. <laughs> I'll tell you something there, Charlie Brown. You've been saying that you've been saying that if it wasn't for you, professional wrestling wouldn't be what it is today. Boy, do I got news for you! I come to you for a reality check there, partner. I come because, you see, I'm just as big an icon in this sport as you are. I am just as big a Hollywood movie star as you are. Yeah, that's some Hollywood movie. Yeah, that's well, better. in that case, yeah, but I don't know about the wrestling thing. You know, if he's as big as a wrestling let me icon have my than Hogan. Because I'm shooting with this one, folks. <laughs> I don't care, man. I'm a multi-millionaire too. I started fighting pro when I was 15 years old. I've had over 6,000 professional matches. I've been stabbed three times. Who? Hello. <laughs> Sit back, Sprout. Sit back. Oh, oh, let's cut. Wait a second. No, no, no. Shut your mouth. Let's cut. Hang on. Floor. Let me have the floor. I've caught your act. Where were you when I was 15 years old taking on all comers in a garage? Where were you? Playing the bass guitar in Tootsie's Bar and Grill? Huh? They <laughs> saying he's been Where in the industry you? longer. Shut up, man. Oh, something, Piper. I'm going to call. A spade, a spade. We ran together. The heck with a backstory. We fought together. And I don't have a problem with you because, okay, as you've been out in Hollywood making all those movies and becoming a multimillionaire, I have to think back 
and give the devil his due, we ran neck and neck. No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> you remember WrestleMania? <laughs> Why is he mentioning Tell WrestleMania? Me I know, right? I was if I hadn't knocked out Mr. T, took on the New York City Police Department, chased Dick Clark back, had my way with Liberace, if they didn't hate me so much, you think they would have been cheering you so much? Shut up, I ain't finished. <laughs> Do you know what bothers you? I'm the only guy you have never been able to beat. He's right. And I'll tell you something else. You're going to admit it. I am as big an icon in this sport, and whether you want to say it or not, you at least have the guts to put your hand out, and you shake my hand, and you admit that it isn't you that brought all these people here. It's all these people here that made you. I was going to come baby face. I'll be glad to. Let me tell you something, Piper. We've had wars to settle the score, which didn't get settled. And I thought you took off with your family and were at peace with yourself. But now that I see you face to face, me being the honest man that I am. <laughs> yes, I admit, you're just as big a superstar as I am. Really? Then straighten up. Oh, by the way, Piper, on the way out, when you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to squat in that one. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something. No, I've had enough. Let me tell you something. You're messing with Hollywood Hogan and the NWO. You step back into my world. I can still see you've got the makeup on your face, Piper. And the way it goes, now that I look in your eyes, Maybe we need to have the war that didn't settle the score. You Your want days come. Yeah, I want to know something. Yeah. I'm the reason you got no hair, and what you gonna do about it? Your day's coming, <laughs> Piper. Oh, really? Your day's coming. Put your hands off, and Sprout. Your day's coming, wow. Piper. Come on, Giant. Ladies, no fear. We have to go. Let's Tell go. you something else here, Chad. Let's go. I'm the boss. Let's go. But I'm Talk not you finished. Want. You know why? You forgot something! Now we got a problem. No. Now we got a problem. Piper has his world title. Get out of here. Tell you what my biggest problem is here. I caught your act with Elizabeth. Snacks Good night, everybody. Here. This is my sport. You can have uh, this they, now, but they, just, they just kept going. Though. I want to... Uh, ran out of okay. time. Ran out of time. Mm. Well, that's why... I think that's why Hogan kept telling him, like, Hey, you know what? And then... Piper kept telling him, shut up, but Hogan's like, no, man, we only got like three minutes left. <laughs> we got to wrap yeah, this yeah. I, think, I think you're right. I think Hogan knew that they, they had limited time, and he was trying to rush Piper to, to – he was trying to give him some hints that they were, that they were running out of time before yeah, they so, pulled the plug on them. Uh, yeah, and they had a hard I, limit I, back then on them pay-per-views because there was like a movie yeah, about cut, to start they, one, that somebody paid for yeah. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They they exactly. couldn't they couldn't uh, go over because some guy was gonna watch like Jurassic Park after that, so that had to start on time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. if someone's paying for it, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, all right. So any thoughts about that Halloween Havoc as a whole? I'll start with Vlad. The Macho Man Hogan match, especially then, it was really chaotic, really fun, a fun match, a fun way to end it. I mean. I think we all pretty much I thought that Hogan was going to win if we were just watching it, like, without knowing what was going to happen. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, but it was still fun how they did it. And the Nick Patrick thing was hilarious, right? The two uh, grabbing his neck. 
was, it was great. I thought that was a nice spot. And, you know, that, was considering how much- that was fucking perfect, bro. <laughs> Especially the build up they did for it, like the storyline right. and everything. But to say how much time they put into the cast, the whole angle, right? It was basically for that for that moment, right? Um, and then the card as a whole was like really solid. Yeah, yeah every match that we sure. every match that kind sure. of showed was really good. I felt so but fifty was, bucks. You would shell it out, like not feel know. too bad about it afterwards. That, that was no, I wouldn't fun. feel bad about it. I had to pay for it. No, and then of course Piper then was a pretty big deal at the time. I don't. This was ninety six, and I think Piper at, at that time was still one of the considered one of the most common wrestling names in the in the history of the business. So, and I think he was just. He was just at WrestleMania, I think, that year. Uh, with, I think that's when he had that match with uh, with Goldust. So it was oh, pretty interesting. So it was a pretty big that whole brawl that they had, you know. Yeah, so that was a pretty big deal to get paper. Uh, All right, let me WCW. let me get Robert's thoughts. You want to give some thoughts as a whole for this whole Halloween Havoc, whatever I showed. Yeah, I know you didn't I watch mean, it like you usually do, but right, right. Look, there you did uh, fast forward through a lot, but you know when we were going through, you know what the different matchups <laughs> were. I thought this was a very solid card, like from yeah, very solid. from beginning to end. There wasn't well, I I wasn't familiar with what was it Faces of Fear. That that was like the, probably the only one where I like uh, I'm not sure about that. But every other match was I would have been interested in watching for sure. I might even if it if this is on Peacock, I might actually go back and watch the whole thing. <laughs> um, it's one you could just leave on, to be honest. Yeah. It's just kind of nice. The the whole vibe of it too, with the set, the mm-hmm. Halloween Havoc set and everything, looked really cool. I thought. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, if you don't have anything more to say, we should probably end our night recording. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. Obviously, it's very valuable. This is really fun to me. I think this is the most fun I can have personally. So, in that regard. I appreciate your friendship and you coming on here and helping me out with the Malapert Smart Podcast. We're on our way to 5 billion subscribers. Keep reminding your friends, everybody. Tell them that this is where the wrestling talk is at. Thank you for watching. Whoever's out there, thank you for listening. If you're just listening on an audio podcast platform, for any of you out there, just so you know, we're also on the Apple Podcasts and stuff. You can add us there. If you're at work and you can't watch, you could just listen. All right, guys, we'll see you when we see you.